Hey guys, what's going on? It's Eli, back with another review video. Yes, finally I am now reviewing the next Star Wars show on Disney+, Plus, and that being the prequel to Rogue One, Andor. Yes, so now I am finally reviewing Andor, part one of course. Uh, first off, because I remember, you know, Year, a couple of years back when uh, this was announced and, uh, you know, this was, com you know, at the time, you know, it was, you know, it was one of those upcoming Disney shows for Disney Plus, you know, from, say, Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, The Clone Wars Season 7, that too, and um, The Mandalorian, just, uh and fine, uh, so yeah, we've got, we had gotten The Mandalorian, we had gotten, uh, you know, Season 7 of The Clone Wars, then more of The Mandalorian, uh, The Book of Boba Fett, Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, The Bad Batch, I almost forgot to mention, and of course there was the uh, Star Wars Visions, you know, the anime-like Star Wars show. Well, now finally, as of now, we finally got the next Star Wars show, Andor. Yeah, I think one of the most anticipated Star Wars shows, I guess you could say. Well, the rest of them, yeah, they were the most anticipated, definitely. Um, you know, and originally, because, uh, I think at first, like, from what we heard, this was going to be, like, say, a, like, a team-up, like, show. Like, it was for both Andor and the K2SO, you know, Alan Tudyk's character, the reprogrammed Imperial droid, the tall droid. Um, but things got changed, and it was focused more on Andor. I guess, like, at some point for the series, we'll see... K2SO, maybe, just maybe, we'll see how K2SO gets reprogrammed. Now, that's a good idea right there. That would be, that would be perfect, because uh, it makes sense. Like, it could very well happen at some point in Andor. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, but, you know, hey, it's turned out pretty good, even though it wasn't or how, how it was originally supposed to be, as I explained, with both Andor and K2SO, like, you know, a mission, like a I guess, I guess you could say, like, a Mission Impossible kind of thing. That's kind of, like, what I heard. Like, even as what, uh, you know, uh, Diego Luna and Al Alan Tudyk, they were describing, so, you know, uh, when this show was announced um, at D23. Yeah, that's right. But anyways, so enough, enough, all right, so with that out of the way, uh, okay, so the description of the show, of course, prequel series to Star Wars Rogue One, in an era filled with danger, deception, and in inter, intrigue, I think it's how you say it, yeah, uh, uh, Cassian will embark on the path that is descent uh, to, to turn him into a rebel hero. And yeah, this is how he becomes a rebel. Um, so yeah, this is my, uh, this is, so part one is, is of course, I am reviewing the first three episodes that came out. That was pretty cool that the show started... I lost my place. As I was saying, like, it's really cool that this show started with three with three episodes. And, you know, technically, it's like all three of them are connected. So it's like kind of like one whole story, but it's in split in three parts. You know, like, say, an episode trilogy, I guess you could say. I don't know. <laughs> but anyways. All right, so episode one. Uh, Cat... Case... Cat... Uh, the, I think, so yeah, the name of that planet in Neo, Cassia, Kaza, I think it's Kaza, yeah. Episode 1, Kaza, Cassian Andor's reckless search for answers about his past makes him a wanted man, because, yeah, I think, like, at one point, like, is at the beginning, like, um, on a rainy night, and, like, you know, he goes into this bar, and he's searching for his sister, you know, a sister of his, and, like, asking, like, if, you know, her sister being there, and he happens to come across these, like, two, uh, these two, um, like, guards or soldiers, whatever they are, and, uh, you know, basically he gets into a little brawl with them, like, they were, like, you know, point, they're pointing their weapons at him, and, you know, he basically kind of, he accidentally kills one of them, and, you know, he, Kills the other, basically. Um, and, um, man, the name of the, the name of that, uh, 
that group, like, uh, I forget, like, what are they called? And I'm pretty sure it would have, like, they would be, they'd be called, let me see. Uh, I don't know. But anyways, um, well, not, well, they were officers, so. Um, anyways, and, like, in each of these three episodes, um, well, you know what, I'll just, I'll go ahead and read the rest of the, uh, description of the episodes, like, you know, the stories. So episode two, that would be me. Cassian attempts to lay low on Ferex as agents of the law close in. And then episode three, Reckoning. Cassian's desperation to avoid arrest leads him to a mysterious man with unknown connections. So as I said, like, it's obvious that these three episodes, they connect into one, um, and um, it really feels like it, especially at the end of episode three. Um, so as I said, the first episode, Kazia, because he, he, he becomes a wanted man after killing two officers uh, of, you know, of the law. And um, new characters, of course, that we get. Uh, like, you know, for example, like there's, uh, there was that one droid, um, I think it's, uh, yeah, B2EMO, voiced by Dave Chapman. And, um, and there was also Bit, B, Bix, Bix, Bix Calline, play, vo played by Adrea Arjon, Arana, Arana, if I'm saying that right. Is the J silent? I, I'm not really sure. Correct me. Um, so there's Bix, and, like, she's a mechanic, and, uh, there was also, uh, uh, Tim, yeah, Tim Carlo, uh, Tim Carlo, I couldn't, you know, it's, it's like, I couldn't tell, like, t like, Tim kind of had feelings, or, I guess, was kind of in a relationship with Bix, I guess, I don't know, it's, it seemed like it, so yeah, Tim Carlo being played by James Mac MacArdle, 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 yeah, that's not right, um, even, like, say, this gets, uh, this gets reported out to, you know, the officers of the law, like, you know, um, agents of the law, etc., and Chief Hine, played by Rupert Vensestart, sounds about right, um, and, um, yeah, and also what was really cool in each of the three episodes, we get flashbacks of Andor's past when he was a child. He started off, like, say, in his childhood days, he was like, uh, like, uh, native like person you know on on the plan on on the planet obviously Ka Ka Kaza. so and even like say um in like the next two episodes episodes two and three like you know his people like in witnessed like say of a, a shuttle crashing and you know one of them like going down to observe and like it seems like one of the pilots is well one of the pilots is already dead but the one is, you know, does, is still alive, managed to survive, even, like, shooting her, and they, like, they poison darts or whatever, like, you know, they, they knock him out. I'm not sure if they were poison darts anyways. Um, and also, like, uh, in episode two and three, because new, more new characters coming in, and I was looking, f I was looking forward to seeing them in Star Wars, for example, because, like, um, Fiona Shaw, who I remember a lot of us would remember, remember her best, you know, from the Harry Potter franchise, plays Marva Andor. Um, yeah, because uh, it, it's obvious because we find out that she is I, the adoptive mother of Andor. Well, and that's the thing he took because Cassian Andor took on the last name Andor, and um, yeah, so. Cassian is his real name. He 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 took the name Andor, you know, because of you know Marva, um, and uh, also uh, in this episode too, oh, trying to get to him, um, Bill Skarsgård, of course, makes his debut in the Star Wars franchise, um, and he was called in. I think it was like yeah, Bix and uh, to recruit Andor. Uh, even my dad was, like, telling me about that, too. Like, uh, Bill Skarsgård's character, uh, Luthan Rail, that sounds about right, the last name, was recruiting Andor. Um, and, uh, oh, I didn't, I didn't 
realize, yeah, uh, Kieran Shaw, like, he was one of the aliens, um, remember him best from the first Chronicles of Narnia film, the White Witch's, like, right-hand man, um, and, and, like, say, the agents of the law, like, they are, they have a wanted, like, you know, on, on Andor, and, like, even one of them just, I guess, so desperate in leading them into, to hunt down and arrest Andor, um, but, yeah, so, and then, of course, like, in episode, th oh, yeah, because, um, hmm, like, especially, like, more, like, sequences, like, you know, with, uh, Andor and Bix, you know, and I was kind of thinking, like, well, could they possibly, like, be a couple, like, at first? I don't know. I mean, even, I, I, I even, like, say Tim, if I recall, Tim was the one that called in, like, called in the, the agents of the law, like, to, to, to come find Andor. And then Reckoning, like, there's a lot that happens in Reckoning, because, you know, um, because, uh, Luthen, like, you know, me, like, Bix takes to, takes Luthen to find Andor, and, um, you know, of course, you know, they do meet finally, and even, like, say, um, the, the, the agents of the law, like, the North, the North and the, well, they're called the, the North and the, the North team and the East team, and, you know, trying to hunt down, uh, Andor, even at, say, one point, they have Bix at gunpoint, and they're, like, holding her hostage or something. Well, she is a bit wounded. And even Tim, who's coming in to, like, save Bix, um, but unfortunately, he gets killed, sadly, by by one of the North uh, team members, like, you know, the North group. And I think, yeah, the the leader of the North group, North, North number one, that's literally how it's titled, played by Abraham Papula, um, I think he's a bit pissed off at, uh, I think it's North 3, played by Richard Henderson, um, has him go back to the shuttle, so, um, like, oh, yeah, it's obvious, there was no, like, there was no order to fire on Tim, and that was unfortunate for Tim, he didn't make it, and just, um, Bix just left there to being handcuffed, you know, and just seeing the lifeless body of Tim, ugh. Um, yeah, even say, um, uh, and, oh yeah, and even the young, uh, Cassian as a child, like the young, like the young Cassian, well, as, as he's called, Kaza, played by Antonio Vina. Um, okay, see, I'm a bit confused, like, Kazia, like, that is, like, Andor's name, like, at, was his name at first, but the planet, like, you know, um, and if I'm trying to remember, like, the one that was, like, I think it was, yeah, it was this guy, Cyril Karn, uh, played by Kyle Solar, like, he was the one that was just desperately just trying to go after, um, Andor, yep, and, uh, even say Andor has him at gunpoint and asking him how many are there, and, like, about 14 and 15, and, of course, you know, Andor and, and um, Luthen, they do escape. Um, they use one, like, shuttle, like, you know, floating, like, vehicle as bait. And um, they escape, and Andor, like, I know Luthen, like, sets off an explosion. And, um, you know, a lot has just happened. Like, you know, even, like, say, a bit of sad music that plays. And, um, uh, hold on a second... Because as they, like, uh, yeah, unfortunately, because, um, you know, I was kind of wondering, like, if, like, if Andor would at least recruit Bix, you know? But, nah. But, of course, she does make it, of course, like a couple of others, like, they they help her out and such, and, uh, you know, um, basically, like, the one that was leading them to hunt down Andor, I could just see, like, the look on his face, and when a lot has just happened, like, you wonder, like, what's going on in his mind, and I, you know, he, like, they have been defeated by Andor, but it isn't, it's not over yet, so, and more flashbacks, like, because, you know, with, um, with, uh, you know, a young Keza, and he, he was be he was recruited by Marva, like, Marva brought, you know, like, helped, uh, Kazian, and, like, 
I guess you could say, yeah, she adopted him, of course, and, like, a bit of flashback of that as they leave Cassian's home planet and Andor, you know, he leaves uh, what, you know, what he's leaving behind, you know, um, and a bit of an emotional moment for Marva, just a tear dropping, because she knows the fact that, yeah, Andor is leaving, so, yeah, I gotta say, like, um, the first three episodes were pretty good, um, even, like, say, yeah, episode three, um, is really good, like, from what my dad said to me, like, uh, you know, it's a bit confusing and hard to, you know, concentrate on what's going on, like, probably saying the first episode. Yeah, it kind of was for me at first, so. <laughs> it's true, so. And I don't know about you guys, like, if any of you had watched Andor, if you got that same feeling, too. But, uh, yeah. And as I said, like, as I said before, like, because it really shows, like, all, the, all three episodes are connected into one, and of course, you know, until, you know, I get to watching the next up, uh, you know, the next episodes, like, starting with episode four, so, yeah, so, awesome, 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 this show so far is really awesome, and, you know, and here's the thing, like, I can't remember if I've said this before, Pro I might have, but even my dad, like, said this, like, he, like, it just feel it feels different, and it does, it, and it, it has to be, it does feel different than the other Star Wars shows that we got, from Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, and the Obi-Wan Kenobi series. And of course, I'm talking about the live-action Star Wars shows. They have different vibes to them, you know, different feels, and rightfully so. Like, uh, Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett, they, they do have the same kind of vibe and how they are done, you know what I'm saying? Like, how they're filmed, etc. So, well, not to mention, because both Mandalorian and Book of Boba Fett being done by... John Favreau and Dave Filoni, and as for Obi Wan, yeah, because that has a different that has its different vibe and feel, and even with say Deborah Chow, she directed that, and definitely it goes for Andor. And here's an interesting fun fact: um, everything that we're seeing in Andor is practical. It's nothing like say what had been done for um, Mandalorian. Uh, Book of Boba Fett and Obi-Wan. All three shows have one thing in common, and that is, like, screen backgrounds. Yeah, that technology. Andor has none of that. Again, all of that is practical, and that's amazing. And, you know, it's, it, it's perfect that there is at least one Star Wars show, or, like, maybe the next ones, like, where there are pra there's everything's real you know what i'm saying and you know they don't use a, all they they don't all the time use like screen backdrops <laughs> yeah so you know um but anyways so i'm looking forward to reviewing the rest of the show and what about you guys what what do you think of uh andor so far and the first 3 episodes and my review uh, my part 1 review i should say leave comments and give this review a like as always so, with that being said, thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed my review, uh, my part one review of Andor. More reviews coming your way. They're going to be awesome. Keep looking forward, and I'll see you guys in the next video slash review. And until my part two review of Andor, take care, peace out, and may the Force be with you.